All right, we are recording. Okay, thank you all for, oh, I'm gonna mute everyone also. Okay. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is John Mazzarella. I work for the IT department. Um, today we're gonna look at Microsoft Bookings, um, which is a tool to help you schedule your meetings uh, with, with clients or, or coworkers or whomever um, a little bit more easily. Um, one caveat or a couple caveats I want to share. Um, first, Bookings comes as a feature in Microsoft 365, right? Microsoft 365, uh, formerly Office 365, you might know it by that name. Uh, Microsoft 365, it, it's the system that we use at UMass Boston um, to power our, our email. Um, when you log into webmail, that's Microsoft 365 Outlook uh, web, I forget the name of it. But anyway, that's how you check your email through Microsoft 365. Um, the other app that you might be very familiar with is OneDrive is also an app in 365. Um, those are like the most commonly used apps out of Microsoft 365. Um, but they have, there's lots of other apps in there, lots of stuff. It's actually very interesting to poke around in if you ever want to see some of the cool things that we have available to us, one of which is Microsoft Bookings. Um, now, the caveat is that Bookings is not like a fully supported app um, by the UMass Boston IT department uh, in the same way that, you know, like uh, email is fully supported or Blackboard. Um, both of these services and lots of others, there's these whole groups of staff people in IT who are available to help with you know, Blackboard or email. Um, there's not that with bookings. It's kind of just there and people have found it and used it and, uh, over time. Um, so it's not a fully supported thing. Uh, that being said, uh, we wanted to put this out because it is a very useful tool. Um, now for me, I use it just for myself. I've used it for about a year uh, pretty heavily and I, I like it a whole lot. Um, so I'm kind of presenting this as, as a, a fellow user as opposed to like an authority or an official support person. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, and as a part of that is that basically, if you run into a lot of trouble with it, uh, there's a few of us who could help a little bit, but it's not something that we can like fully help you set up and run in case you have any trouble. I haven't had any really big problems myself. I know several other people who use it, not a big deal, but just wanted to say all of that. The second caveat is that this is the first time I've ever run this webinar before. Uh, so you'll, you'll excuse me if I stumble around a little bit. And then the third caveat is that my wife uh, went to pick up our daughter uh, at the school bus stop and I have the younger two here. So if you hear a crash and a screaming from the other room, I may have to dash off real quick, but I should be back uh, in a moment. Hopefully that doesn't happen. All right. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do an overview on what Bookings is. Um, then we're gonna do a walkthrough uh, of the app itself kind of from a user's perspective. So like if you're using Bookings, what your clients would experience uh, to, to schedule a session with you. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you how to set it up for yourself. If you're interested to use it, I'll show you how to do, how to set it up to get it up and running. All right, so Microsoft Bookings, like I said, it's a tool to help you in scheduling meetings, uh, help your clients or your coworkers in scheduling meetings with you. Um, I'm actually gonna share my screen at this point. Okay. Can you all see that? Little oh, thumbs up, good, yeah. Um, the, the screen I'm sharing is, is up there. So if you see me looking up, that's, that's what I'm looking at. Um, okay, so in brief, the way that Bookings works is that it connects to your Outlook calendar, okay? And it looks for times that you have um, in, your, in your calendar where you have existing appointments already uh, and times that you have availability, okay? And then it offers those free slots up to your clients or your coworkers or whomever um, as possible times that those people can schedule a meeting with you. So what I wanna show is th this is this is what it looks like. This is what the client would see. Um, this is what my clients see when they wanna schedule time with me. It has my name and the, the calendar. I wanna do a split screen here like that. And here is the same week, right? The eighth, here's the eighth. Uh, now this is my, Outlook calendar, um, and this is the booking side. So as you can see, the back and forth. Now, um, you'll notice that on the 8th, I have several things scheduled, and then I have this block of time here between 11.30 and 1 that's available. And so now if I switch over to the, the bookings, the user side, uh, and I select um, uh, March 8th, the times that it 
uh, presents as available uh, for someone to book with me is the same times, right? 1130, 12 o'clock and 1230. Now, um, you'll notice at the top, I have two different meeting types available. And at first I had selected 20 minute meeting. Um, if I switch this to 45 minute meeting, the times that it, it presents as available are changed, right? So it fa basically it factors in the amount of time that a meeting takes to where now there's only two meetings, right? 11.30 to 12.15 is, is understood, or 12 o'clock to 12.45. Now, if someone were to come in here and select one of these meetings and, and go through the process of, of booking it, actually both of them would be removed under the 45 minute block because there's not enough time to have a 45 minute meeting. If someone had the 12 o'clock session scheduled, well, no one can have a 45 minute meeting starting 11.30 because it would go too long. And so both of these options would be disappeared. Um, unless they went back and selected 20 minutes, and then it would show one of the free slots that was there in the middle. Um, let's see. Mm. Now, I just want to be clear that notice it's only showing the availability. Um, it doesn't show anything else about what you have scheduled on the times that you're, you, you don't have available. Um, you can see it right now because, again, you're, you're looking at my personal view of my calendar. Uh, but a user wouldn't see this left side of the screen. They would only see the right side of the screen. So don't worry about like um, people seeing into your calendar and seeing what your appointments are. They can't see anything at all, except just like is shown here, uh, your availability. All right, so let me bring this back. So um, another thing to keep in mind is that this means that you have to keep your calendar current, right? Because if you have something scheduled like, um, and this is something where I run into trouble sometimes is like, maybe I'll have like a dentist appointment. And that's not something that I would always think to put into my Outlook calendar, but then now it's being, that set time segment is being shown as available to my clients. And my client could go in and, and book something at a time where I already have something scheduled. Um, and so, you, so I have to keep my calendar current and they're ordered this to be fully useful. It's not a big problem though. Um, uh, it's very easy for me to go in and edit a reservation if I see that there's a conflict like that. Um, and really, so it's not a big deal, but it's something to keep in mind. All right, so we're gonna walk through now. Um, we're gonna walk through now, hold on, I'm just looking at my notes, sorry. Okay, so we're gonna walk through now uh, as if I were my own client, uh, wanting to book a time with me. And so I would get this link to this bookings page. I would select which one of the uh, sessions that I want to have and pick a, a date and then a time. So I'll pick 12 o'clock. And then the client comes in and puts their name. So John Doe, let's say. And uh, here's my email account. And they can fill in any of these fields. Everything else is optional, but they can fill this in too. And notes. If, or maybe, maybe they want to write what they want to meet about. Okay. And then they hit book. And then it starts to load. Uh, when I, okay, there it is. So that, and that's it. So I click okay. And this is kind of for the client uh, to review their booking. Um, it gives all the information, including the booking location or the meeting location. I'll show you how I set this up to go right to my Zoom. Um, it also lets me. Uh, let's see, it also lets me uh, reschedule if I need to right here, um, but it, it also sends a notification to the client with all of the information that they had set for their reservation, including the edit, the reschedule link, um, but also including a, uh, um, a, calendar, uh, a calendar event, right? So they can add it to their own calendar. Uh, for me, as it's a little, little bit confusing because I'm going back and forth as the as the host, but also the client. But so for me as the host, um, it goes right into my calendar right away. So I can come now into my Outlook calendar and you can see now where this had been totally open, uh, it now shows a, a calendar invite for John Doe, 20 minute meeting uh, starting at 12 o'clock. And if, if a client were to go back to, oops, let's see. Back there. One second, sorry. I told you there might be a hiccup. Okay, there we go. So now if a client were to come back uh, to schedule a time with me 
and go to that same day. Well, now the 12 o'clock time is not available. And like I said earlier, if they were to pick the 45 minute one, there's no availability on that date because there's no slot big enough for it. All right. Um, I said that the client gets uh, an email notification about the, the booking. Um, me as the host, I also get email notification. So it goes into my calendar all automatically, which is nice. But I also get an email that says that, hey, so-and-so just scheduled time with you. Here's all the information. Um, and so that's a good way to be you know, kept up in the loop of, of when things are getting scheduled in my calendar. Okay, let's move on to the last step of how, if you wanna uh, use bookings yourself, uh, how you do that. So I'm gonna start from here. Uh, I'll put this link in the chat. Uh, this is our IT's new um, Microsoft Bookings uh, training website. So there it is in the chat. Uh, just umb.edu slash, uh, that's kind of long, I'm not gonna read it. Um, anyway, it's in the chat. Uh, let's see. And on the homepage here, it talks a little bit about Microsoft Bookings, kind of a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today. Uh, it has a button here. This will launch right into Microsoft Bookings. So um, if you ever have trouble finding how to log in, you can get to it from here. Um, and you log in again with your UMass email and password because it's just part of the, our webmail system. Now, for a first time user, there's some steps that you have to um, you do to set, up, set it up. So you would click here and it would go to that first time user setup steps. Now I can't show you those live because I've already set up bookings on my account. Um, so we can go to the instruction. There's a, a page of instructions on how to do this um, that shows you what you will experience for your first time. Um, so uh, see first time with bookings, set up your page and you can also get to it from here. So I'll click this link. Now these next, the, the, the rest of this presentation is gonna be kind of walking you through how you would set up if you were interested in using this. Um, don't feel like you have to memorize all of this because it's here on the website. Um, so I'm gonna walk through the, the stuff that's presented on the website, um, but uh, you don't have to memorize it all. You can always get back to it yourself um, from this website. So you would uh, click that button on the homepage. You can also get to it um, if you've recognized the, let's see, in your webmail or, or your Outlook calendar or any of these apps, it has this nine but dots button here in the top left corner. This is called the app switcher. This is how you switch between uh, different apps. So you can get to calendar or uh, OneDrive, Outlook is your webmail, but also bookings is in the, link, the, the list. Um, so you click on the app switcher button and you, you might need to click on all apps. And then you would scroll down through the list and find bookings. You can also search. So if I go, all apps up to the very top, I can search for it. I can bookings, and there it is, bookings. Now, again, this is gonna load it, in it, load it to a different page than you would experience because I've already set it up. So I'm gonna switch back. What you'll experience, let me zoom in a little bit. When you click on the bookings link, you'll get this page. And this is kind of like a Microsoft marketing page explaining what bookings is all about, which is worth reading if you wanna look through it. But the, the important step is to click the, the get it now button. Looks like that. Let's look at it now. And I don't have the screenshot for this, but it uh, it wants you to add a booking calendar. You may only have one option. It's whichever calendar you primarily use in Outlook. So select that calendar. And then it's gonna ask you for your name or, or um, if you're using this as a group, which I'll talk about in a, in a few minutes, um, you can do your group's name, but just some name. Actually, you can see what it looks like on mine uh, here. So I, for my name, I put John Mazzarella, but if I was setting up bookings for a, a, a department or like, you know, the, the advisors group, I might say, you know, advisors group or whatever the, the group name is. There's also a business type. That's, I'm not sure what that is. That's optional. Um, I put my job title there, but it's optional. So you can leave that blank. Okay. So from here, I can show it to you in the live app. So I'm gonna switch over to the live app at this point. All right. Okay, so the next step um, is to kind of set up your, your bookings um, account. And you do that uh, down at the very bottom. Let me zoom in a little bit first too. Oops. Uh, on the left-hand menu, we're gonna be going through several of these pages. The very bottom is business information. So you click on business information. 
And there's lots of different fields here um, that you can fill out and they're mostly all optional. So again, business name, uh, that's the same thing that we would have seen in the previous step, but you can customize it here. So I have my own name. Uh, business address, um, if you were in a physical location, you put your address there. Uh, if you were in a physical location on campus, you don't have to put the full address, but maybe you can put the building name and, and room number. Uh, phone number, uh, this will be here, your, your email address by default, uh, but you, maybe if it's, again, if it's a group thing, you could change it to a group email address. Again, all of these are optional, so I don't have any of them filled out, but if it applies, if it's something applicable to you, you can. And then again, like I said, business type, I'm not sure exactly what this is for, but I put my own job title here, um, if that would be useful. Next is currency. Now, Microsoft Bookings is what was made uh, primarily to be used for like a small business. Uh, you know, like a barber shop maybe might use Bookings to book their, their chairs. Um, and so uh, a lot of people who use Bookings across the world, it would be a paid thing. Now here at UMass, that doesn't really make sense. Um, and most of our services are gonna be free. That being said, we do, there's no like, uh, you have to pick something here. So you can just leave it as the default set to uh, USD. In a minute, I'm gonna show you how you, you'll be able to uh, hide any mention of any kind of pricing. Um, so I'll show you where that is in a minute, but uh, just to explain why it has currency. And actually a lot of these uh, titles and a lot of these phrasing, um, keep in mind that again, that this is made uh, often to be used with like something like a small business. Um, and that's why they use some things that maybe would be a little bit confusing. However, it's still totally useful for kind of for our purposes at, at UMass. Um, so, you know, don't let any of that scare you, it's fine. Okay, next you could add a logo. If you have a logo, again, might be more applicable for a group, but you can do that here. Um, if you don't add a logo, just like on mine, I don't have a logo and nothing's shown. So it's not gonna show any empty area, but that's an option. And then back up towards the top uh, on the right side, it shows business hours. Now, depending on your screen size, I think this is, yeah. So if you have a very small screen, you might not see business hours on the right. Instead, it's gonna be just further down. So it kind of jumps around from the, from, the, um, from the right side of the screen to the bottom, depending on your screen size. But this is, um, the business hours is on any given week, what hours are you available? Outside of whatever your calendar says. So your calendar might have uh, other appointments and that would further restrict your time. But this is like on any given week, when are you available for, for meetings? Um, so you could just put like, you know, nine to five if you want that, or maybe you don't want to have meetings first thing in the morning or last thing at the end of the day. So you might do like, you know, 10 to four or whatever. Uh, you can also do kind of a split shift. So let's say I wanted to have meetings from nine to, or rather be available for meetings from nine to, let's say, uh, where is it, 12, 12 noon. Okay, and then I wanted to go to lunch. I wanted to have a lunch hour, let's say. So I have a break from 12 to one. Well, hold on. So I can click this plus button to add in an extra slot um, on that same day. So now Monday has two different slots. So I come down and I pick, I just list every time uh, here, one o'clock, one to five. So now I'm available from nine to 12 and from one to five. So you can do stuff like that. You can also delete, uh, you can hit the X on a day. So maybe you just want to have Tuesdays off and do that that way. Um, and then you click save. So every one of these pages, you make all the changes that you want to do. And at the very top, you may have to scroll. Oh, no, you don't, have, you don't have to scroll. It stays up there. Uh, you click on the save button. So I click on save. I'm going to click discard because I don't want to change anything. But the save button is what you would click. So discard and discard. All right. Check my notes, see if there's anything else. The next page that we're gonna look at is uh, the services page. So we're kind of going backwards through the list, services. And so you'll see I have two uh, services listed and that uh, matches the meeting durations that I have, the meeting types of, you guys are still seeing my screen, right? Yeah, okay. Um, for your first time, when you first get here, you're gonna see only one entry. It says uh, initial con initial consult, and so you can um, you can delete that and add a new one, or you can just edit that one um, to to fit with what you want. Uh, so you would click on uh, any of the services here to edit it. Click on that initial 
console uh, entry to edit it and start filling it out again. So you have the service name. The way I have mine set up, like you saw, is, is two different time durations of 20 minutes and 45 minutes. What you do is could be totally up to you, um, depending on your needs. So like um, potentially you could use Microsoft Bookings, let's say, to, uh, to, to reserve meeting rooms if you run if you have meeting rooms in your area. Um, and you can have each service be the name of, of uh, one of the locations. Um, I couldn't think of any other examples of what you could do with it, but you know, think about what you do at your job that might be useful to, to do here for different services. Um, so this is the service name. You can do a description. It's optional. I don't do that. Uh, location. So this is, uh, again, like a address or a, a room number. But um, I do all, all of my meetings are online these days. And so I have my Zoom link here, right? In Zoom, you can have a meeting, a, a link, a, a Zoom link for a single meeting, or you can have kind of a, a standing meeting link that whenever you have a meet, new meeting, uh, you use, reuse that same link. And you can post that here. You can even customize it to have your name like I did, um, but that, that's optional. Um, so that's what I do. I put my Zoom link here. Now, it's a little confusing because there's also a setting here, right? These, all of these settings that you'll see are kind of a toggle. So you click it to turn it on or off. Um, so there's this setting here, add an online meeting. Well, because this is Microsoft, the online meeting that you're adding is uh, Microsoft Teams. So if you use Microsoft Teams, that's great. You can actually, in that case, leave this blank and then turn this on and it will automatically create a Microsoft Teams meeting for you. And that is pretty convenient. Um, if you're not using Teams and using Zoom, you can do it this way. If you're doing something else, you can do something else, but that's what that switch means. Okay, duration, um, let's set that there. I don't know about days, if you have a multi-day meeting, but you can do that if you want to. I'm not gonna go through all of these. Um, so I'm gonna jump around a bit. This one I wanted to show, buffer time. This is like, if you wanted to have time before a meeting and after a meeting where let's say remember someone uh, in my test earlier someone scheduled from 12 o'clock well maybe i want to make sure that no one can schedule the 15 minutes before some other meeting um, i can set a buffer of you know an hour before or you know 15 minutes before or something same thing with after if i want to leave time after each scheduled meeting uh in case it goes over or just to kind of recoup um, i can do that with buffer uh, either before or after um, okay, so remember I talked about price, right? Everything has a price, um, but you can hide it. And the way you do that, and actually by default, it's set to price not set, and that's what you want to set. Price not set means uh, don't show the price. So uh, by default, it's there, but you can see there's a couple other pricing options. Um, for a while, I was confused. I had it set to free for a long time, and actually it showed on my public site, it said 20 minutes free, which is just kind of confusing, but the actual proper way you're supposed to do it, if it's if it really is free and you don't want to say anything about prices to say price not set. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into this in super detail, but remember I talked about how uh, the client gets an email notification and you get an email notification. You can control some of that here. Uh, you get a notification when the um, reservation is first made right away. It gets, it sends those two emails out, but it also sends two more emails out uh, with a reminder. 24 hours earlier by default. That's how it's set here. You see one day, one day before the meeting is, is scheduled to run, it'll send a reminder, hey, you have a meeting scheduled for this time, don't forget. Um, all of those emails are customizable and you can add additional email reminders. Um, you can set when those emails sent, are sent and who they are sent to, either the, the client or to you. Um, and you can customize what the text says here. I, I'm not gonna get into that too, in too much detail right now. Okay, what else? That's all I'm gonna show on this page. Um, say one more thing that uh, I talked about that you can set this up for yourself and that's primarily what I do, but you can also set this up for a group like I talked about. And if you have this set up with a group, there's an extra field shown here, not just the service, but also which person you want the client wants to meet with. The client can actually select who they want to meet with out of your group um, by name. They can pick the person's name uh, or they can pick, you know, I, I, I'll meet with anyone, it doesn't matter. And so there's a ways to control that uh, per service here. And then you can, uh, there's a whole se separate staff page that we're not going to get to, uh, but that's listed here. Um, okay, I'm going to discard, but you would click save uh, when you're all done, but I'm going to click discard. Let's go back. 
Pardon. Okay, let me check my notes. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm not going to get to the staff page, but again, that's where you can set it up if you want to have multiple people in here. Um, the customers page is a list of the people who your who are your customers, your clients, anyone that's booked with you. You have a list of that here. Um, real briefly, the calendar is it's loading. Um, this is a, a a calendar view of all of the appointments that you've. That, that people have made with you. So actually I had a, uh, a meeting earlier today that someone had scheduled with me and here is that entry. Uh, if I go forward, I can see the test that I had set up, uh, the two tests I guess I set up. Is, is this a real meeting? Let's see. Anyway, um, I can see, uh, oops, 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 what am I doing? Okay, so I can see um, my upcoming calendar. Now again, you can see this in your, in your regular, uh, oh, I closed it. You can see this in your Outlook. Um, calendar but if you want to see it directly in uh in bookings you can do that too uh it gives you some extra options like i can click into it and i can edit it which means i'm changing the the time right and come in and uh yeah here, here's my john doe right from earlier john doe um, i can reschedule it or i can cancel the book so uh, but discard uh the last thing that you do uh after you've configured all of that stuff the the uh, business information and the um, services is you need to publish your bookings page. So I come to the booking booking page page over here, and this is already published. So I'm going to unpublish it so you can see what it looks like. So it'll show that your booking status is uh, unpublished. Um, a couple settings here that you can set, like uh, require Microsoft 365 login. This just means that. Um, the person, the client will have to log in in order to schedule time with you, proving that they're a UMass person. Uh, I have it unchecked, which technically means that anyone in the world could schedule time with me. Um, but if I wanted to make sure that only UMass people could do that, I, I can check that box. Uh, search engine, engine indexing. I think this means that people could search to find me. And so I have that disabled. So I check that box to disable it. Um, and then a couple other things like uh, how frequently people can schedule, not, not frequently, but um, in what time increments. So every 30 minutes it's available. Uh, how, how, um, how far ahead of time someone can schedule an appointment? So in, in hours. So I have it said that someone can only schedule, uh, they, they need to have at least two hours before the time that they want. If, if someone wanted to schedule a time with me for like 20 minutes from now, it's not gonna offer that as an option. And then maximum, if I don't want people to schedule things too far in advance in days, I can set it so you know someone can only schedule it up you know in the next 365 days but you can customize that also um, other settings again that i'm not going to go into super detail but you can poke around and then i can set the color if i want to change what color that my page has um and then so presumably now your your booking site is all set and you would click save and publish okay. and it gives you your link so this you can copy copy so this is the link to your public your, your public bookings page like this. Now, what I do is I, I put this link in my email signature. Um, I, I have a little email signature that says, hey, if you want to schedule time with me, check my Microsoft uh, bookings link. And you can put it there. Um, if, you're, if you're a faculty person, you can put it in your uh, Blackboard page. Um, if you have a page on the UMass Boston website for, for you or for your department, you can put it there. Um, so anywhere where you are talking to your clients, either directly, you know, like through email um, or through the web, you can post this link there. So uh, the last thing I wanna show you, I'm gonna put this back, right, back to our uh, Microsoft Bookings training page. It's loading. Is that at the bottom of every page on here. So actually, let me show, let me go back a step. Um, remember I said that the first thing you have to do is set up your bookings page. And that has its own page with all the instructions that we walked through. Then the next step was, remember, we set our hours, and our business information. There's a separate page for that. So like I said, you don't have to memorize all of the things that we presented. Um, all the instructions are here with like, you know, step one, step five, and so on. And then the last step is to, or the next step is to set up your services. Remember, this is the service name and the duration and all that. All the instructions are here. 
last step is to publish your booking site with some of the published settings that we looked at. So again, all of those, um, all the stuff that we covered are, are here on this page. And again, the link is in the chat. Uh, the last page that's on here though, is our training and support uh, options, which again, because this is an official service, it's somewhat limited. Um, the things that are listed here as options is for one, the workshop that you're all attending. So uh, you've already gotten this one down. I do have other sessions of this scheduled. Presumably I might be more polished in the future or might have figured out some additional topics to include. So if you wanna come again, or if you wanna refer your friends, uh, this is that link. Um, this second link is, um, I don't know if you guys have used LinkedIn Learning. LinkedIn Learning is a training service that we get uh, through UMass Boston that you can learn all kinds of different technologies. Um, and they have a whole section on how to use Microsoft Bookings. Um, lots more detail than I covered. So they basically go through every single setting. They, by the end of that series, you'll, you'll uh, be an expert in it. Um, so you can access LinkedIn Learning with this link here. And you'll just have to log in with your UMass Boston email address. And then again, is here's my caveat that I said earlier about how it's you now it's not an official service, but we'll try what we can. Uh, and if you have a question, you can contact the IT service desk. And most likely, they'll forward the email to me um, if you have a question. But you know, we'll we'll help how we can. So I see I have some questions in the chat. So I'm going to stop.